Castell. Hi, and welcome to Lunch with Sandy. This is Sandy Castell, and I've got uh, some great guests today. We've got, of course, Amy Frost, our Delivering Happiness Messenger. Yay. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hello, I'm happy. Very good, happy. Good. Happy, happy. <laughs> and we've got Gary Anthony over here. Hi, Gary. Good afternoon, Sandy. Hi, oh, here I am. Oh, uh, I know. I know. There we are. Now we can hear ourselves. And then we've got Kevin Gardner here, who's got some instruments with him. Thanks for having me, Sandy. Hi, it's Gary. Pleasure, as I always. mean, uh, hi, I'm Kevin. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm Gary. Gary. That's Gary. Gary. Keep your men straight, girlfriend. <laughs> You're Sandy. <laughs> and then we've also got uh, Johnny Lust and Jeff, and Jeff Duncan, who are going to be joining us shortly. They are on their way from the I-15, uh, uh -oh. coming up to Sahara. <laughs> cool. So, welcome today. Um, so, Amy, what kind of message do you have for our listeners today? Well, first off, everybody, let's take a nice deep breath. <gasps> hold for a second and release. Ah, yeah. Let's do one more for good measure. Right. Breathing in, breathing in. You hold a little bit, and then you release. Ah. Um, I think we're 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 not breathing. That's part of the problem, right? <laughs> and, and stress. Not breathing and That's stress right. is That's causing right. a lot of problems. So um, I'm I'm reading a book. I just finished it called Shift Happens, and loving, loving, loving it. And um, it talks about stress. And that it's a message. Stress. And, and message. Uh, I have some, so I, I, they've got some really fabulous questions to help you to stop, take a nice oh. deep breath, and ask yourself to see what is that stress telling you. So I'm going to just read the question. So, so in other words, the stress that we have in our lives, I can hardly hear myself. Oh, there we go. Um, the stress that we have in our lives is telling us something. It is. It's sending it's a us message. a message. It's a message. Because if we have stress in our life, that means that we're not doing something, or, yes. or we need to be doing something yes. else to help us not have all that stress in our lives, right? A really, yes. A really good friend of mine, uh, VP of sales, uh, Xerox, and I mean, just very, very successful. And something that he says that really brings that home to me is just when when your action in alignment, you got stress. <laughs> right? I got <laughs> stress. So this is pretty much stressing me out. Is it stressing you? Find some questions to help you. Here you go. So when you're feeling stressed, it's, it's, you know, what is the fear? So what's the fear that's going on? Where am I not being authentic? Okay. Who am I not being honest with? What am I not giving? What am I not receiving? Who can help me? What am I not listening to? What's the lesson here? How can I be smarter? Maybe some time management, you know, maybe at least what is my real goal? We get caught up in the hamster wheel that we're doing and we're going and we're busy and we're busy and we're stressing ourselves out and we're probably not getting any closer to what we really care about. So well, a good, good friend of mine, his thing is he's a, he works full-time for the school district, and he also is a minister, and he runs a, a program for kids and works with a lot of kids doing really great work. And we were talking the other day, and he said, you know, I'm doing lots of great things, but my main priority is my number one priority is my connection to God mm -hmm. and family first. Right. And because I'm doing all this stuff, I'm losing that, those two connections. He said, well, then you need to stop and reprioritize. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds right and and also, you mentioned something in there about what are you not giving and what are you not, not receiving. receiving. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> it's very important, you know, to have a supportive group around you, you know, to um, so that you can be receiving that support in the goals that you are, you know, uh, pursuing. Absolutely. And when we yeah. talk about, you know, it has to be great at everything. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a, you know, really good organizer. So if you need help organizing, you call me and I'll go in. The problem is you may like get things organized the way you may not like it. Oh, you haven't seen my <laughs> office. <laughs> but I can organize the crap out of it, you know. So again, finding somebody who loves doing whatever it is, and if it's not your thing, that's okay, but find somebody who's really good. Yeah, but see, the thing of it is, is I'm stressed out because I'm not sure how you're going to organize it. I know, that's, what I'm saying, that's why I will not go in there. there. I won't go in there. But others might let me. So there you go. No, that's okay, but you're right. I understand that. It's so good. Um, so listen, Jeannie, Jeannie Bry just came in. Is it Bree Bry? It's Bry. I'm not saying it incorrectly, so I always have to check. Just Why is Bree Bry or Bry? Well, yeah, I don't. No, I'm not cheesy. Cheese. <laughs> that's I'm not cheesy well, at all. No, I don't know about that. But I remember, I remember once she told Corny me, not me. Corny, all right. like the cheese, so I always no, go, not at all cheesy. Jeannie Bry. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. So, Jazz and Jeannie Bry, how are you doing today? Uh, well, I'm battling a cold, and I have two cases oh, this week. away from I us. <laughs> well, I figure it can't be contagious. I've had it almost a month, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm <coughs> Excuse me. I know. I'll tell you, I got that earlier this year, too, in January, and then my husband got it, and then oh, I got no. it, and then he got Oh, my gosh. It goes I haven't had the circle. flu in seven years. It Woo! wasn't the flu. It was just a cold. 
And you'd think a simple <coughs> cold, but it, as simple as a cold sounds, it still can really wreak havoc in your life. And it can cause stress. And <laughs> probably a message. It, in and of itself, is your it body you is telling message? you something. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, so anyway, um, we've been starting off our show with a song from uh, Gary Anthony, and Gary Anthony is in the studio with us today. So I, I would like to have him uh, sing a song to us. Um, yeah, this, what uh, this, what track is this? This one actually um, it gives me... I always wanted to sing these tunes, and these, these are from uh, the... Antonio Carlos Show Beam, Francis Albert Sinatra's album, and uh, I had the opportunity to record some of these, so this is the fun, the fun song that I enjoy singing. <coughs> and you're going to sing it live for us today? No, no, no. It's going to be. Uh, I recorded oh, it. It's recorded. I had to record. <coughs> it. In the studio. These, okay, are, these yeah. are songs I had to record. Okay, well, let's listen to it. And what's the name of the song? Bobbles, bangles, and beads. Bobbles, mm -hmm. bangles. Mm -hmm. Here we go with Gary Anthony. <gasps> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Whoa. Sorry, uh, I can't off. Just find a chair over here if there's a an extra chair. He's going to be playing, and then you guys will be playing. So, are you in the front row? Uh, not really. Um, I'm just going to hang out. It's got to be my <laughs> with Sandy and that's Gary Anthony singing Bubbles, Bangles, Bangles and Beans. And beans. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, one of my favorite uh, Francis Albert Sinatra's Tony Cosmo Beam album. Yes. Made back in 68. Oh, uh, but uh, I really, really wanted to record these for years and I finally got the chance to. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I Thank love you. it. It's very calming and soothing. How yeah. Have, the, have you given me this CD yet? It's called Sleep Music. Sleep Music. <laughs> <laughs> relaxing. Relaxing at home. It, 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 takes, it, it takes the stress yeah, away. That's what we like. Oh, yeah, that's what we like. Stress. I don't, I'm yeah. feeling more so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> we feel much more calm now, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. Don't we? <laughs> so, Jeannie, um, uh, tell us a little bit about your show tomorrow night. You're going to be reopening, I mean, the, it's the, the Italian Sabrina. American Club yeah. is reopening, yeah. and Grand it's reopening. been in the soft Obi. opening this last week, mm -hmm. and I was there last week, uh, last oh. Friday night. Gary, you were there, mm -hmm. I saw you there, and a lot of our friends were there. You were there, uh, Kevin? I love it. It was uh, always vintage. Now it's gone swanky. Swanky. With a new Italian tile, a new carpet, and new paints, and new furniture. Now, is it the ballroom? Is it the ballroom that's open tomorrow night? Yeah, we're going to be in the ballroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Great. Now we have yeah. we have an entire ballroom group coming as well as well as the Sailor Jerry Swing Kids. Oh, they're going to dance. Yeah, so there'll be a whole bunch oh, of dancers. Wow. It's going to oh, be really exciting. Great. Oh, great! I'll have to tell my guy at the dance studio. Well, because the band is the Speakeasy Swingers, and we're a seven piece swing band, but we also do ballroom music. So tomorrow right. night there'll be some Latin and everything. Uh -huh. But. Um, What's interesting is that tomorrow night is for dining and dancing, uh -huh. and there's a brand new chef who I guess came from the Paris Hotel. Oh my Wonderful God. chef. Yeah. And um, Saturday, we're doing an afternoon cabaret concert. So no, di no dancing, no dining, just come to the Winchester Cultural Arts Center, 2 o'clock, and we'll do an hour, 15-minute show. 
of, of I've got four costume changes, wow. so I have to be healthy. By yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you to my doctor. Oh, okay. Please, please. So, so Jeannie Bride is going to be at the Italian American Club. Club tomorrow evening mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock? 7 to 10. 7 uh -huh. o'clock, 7 to 10. So no cover, but a love donation requested. Yeah, well, we're going to all be out there. And then, and then Amy, I know, uh, do we have some events coming up uh, soon? I know we have some, uh, some group. We do. Well, we have something, we're something I'm really excited winning. about. We're yeah. doing, uh, we're calling them collaborative circles. And they're going to be at the Daybreak Coffee Shop, and we're going to get uh, 12 people together. We almost got our number, and we're going to uh, everybody inter you know get to really meet each other at a deeper level, uh -huh. and then we're going to do um, action planning and brainstorming about ways that we can support each other, right? And we can support our community at the same right. time. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to be there on the 19th. I know, yeah. I, 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 yeah. and I'm, uh, we're going to do it twice a month, right? And well, I really think is we it can the make first and third. It's going to be the first and third Tuesday at Tuesday. four o'clock, and that's at Julie's. It's uh, uh, Julie's, yeah, the Dayberry Coffee Shop, right? And that's over on uh, Las uh, Base. It's on Valley, uh, View. Valley View and, and Russell. Russell, yeah. Right. Right. And I'm really, we're really supporting her. She's starting to do something called karaoke for a cause. Uh -huh. And that's on Friday nights, and you know, we're just really tr finding ways. And she's created a coffee blend for Wema. That's right. And a percentage will go to Wema, and just it's really exciting. We're really getting, you know, getting a foothold. And how can we do our work of purpose? And help create causes at the same right. time. Yay! In fact, in fact, Lori, uh, Louise Carruth is doing that also with her tea blends. She is. She yeah, is. yeah. So, so it's nice that people are coming together. They're supporting each other, and at the same time, they're having their own businesses. Yeah. And, and people are coming to their businesses because. And that's that old model. I'm things. just going to give and give until right. I go bankrupt. That's right. We're not <laughs> playing that game anymore. Oh, you forgot I'm to not tell me before. I <laughs> well, I'll, yeah, yeah. Come for free, no, no. Yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so. Um, and we've also got Kevin Gardner here. Now, Kevin, I know Kevin Gardner Rose. Well, you know, yeah, I thought it was Kevin Rose Gardner, <laughs> yeah. but it's Kevin Gardner yeah, Rose. Yeah, I got that from my grandmother. So, yeah. is Rose the last name? Yes. Your last name? Yeah. And then Gardner is? My middle name. Your middle name? But who's, who's uh, grandmother's? Where's your grandmother fit in? Uh, she, she named me after some movie star a long time ago, so uh -huh. I don't know. She, uh, she loved the name Gardner, and then... But you also use Kevin Gardner on Facebook, though, as your name, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a, my middle name. Yeah. But don't you use it as your real name? Is your name name? No, no. Okay, well, I was looking all the way around. Anyway, so what are you going to play for us? You've got your uh, your fiddle here, or otherwise known as a violin. Yes. And it depends on, on if you're playing country music, country music yeah. or if you're playing in the orchestra. If it's orchestra, it's yes. a violin. I know this because I, I recorded yeah. back in Nashville. And back in Nashville, it looks very much like a violin, but when you're playing in Nashville, it's a fiddle. Well, when I was in college, <laughs> I had a real okay. persnickety uh, music teacher. And uh -huh. he was like, I'd like to take your fiddle class. He's all, I don't teach fiddle. I teach <laughs> violin. But, but they're all fiddle instruments. So he was calling it fiddle by the end of the semester. So, <laughs> so what are you going to play for us today? A little Chuck Daniels for you. Okay. Now are you playing the track? Yes, I am. Okay, here we I'm go with Kevin Gardner Rose. <laughs> and if you're just tuning in now, this is Kevin Gardner Rose. Devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind. He's way behind. He's willing to make a deal. He came across this young man sawing on a fiddle and playing it hot. The devil jumped on a hickory stomp. Said, "Boy, let me tell you what. I guess you didn't know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. If you care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you." You play a pretty good fiddle, boy, but give the devil his due. Better fiddle of gold against your soul that says I'm better than you. Boy said, my name's Johnny, and it might be a sin. I'll take your bet you're going to regret some of the best it's ever been. Johnny, rising up your bow and play that fiddle hard. Hell's broke loose in Georgia, and the devil deals the cards. If you win, you get that shiny fiddle made of gold. If you lose, the devil gets your soul. Devil opened up his case, he said, I'll start the show. Fire flew from his fingertips, he rosined up his bow. And he pulled the bow across the strings, it made an evil hiss. And a band of demons joined in and sounded something like this.
the devil finished, Johnny said, well, you're pretty good, old son. Well, sit down in that chair right there, let me show you how it's done. Mountain run, boys, run. The devil's in the house of the rising sun. Chicken in the bread pan picking out dough. Grand as your dog bite, no child, no. Here we go. devil bowed his head because he knew that he'd been beat. He laid that golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. Johnny said, devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. I done told you once, you son of a gun, I'm the best it's ever been. He played, fuck, fire and mountain, run, boys, run. The devil's in the house of the rising sun. Chicken in the bread pan picking out dough. Grand as your dog bite, no child, no. Here we go. Lunch with Sandy. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Hi, welcome back to Lunch with Sandy. We are here on KLAV 1230 AM every Wednesday, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to be having lunch afterwards over at the uh, Sandy's Wood Fire Grill, so we hope you'll join us at uh, 1 o'clock over at Sandy's Wood Fire Grill. We're going to have lunch with Sandy in addition to our show today. Um, we've got a couple of new guests here in the show. We've got uh, Johnny Lust and Jeff Duncan. Hi, guys. How are you doing? How Good, how are you? Great, thanks for having us here. So it's kind of funny, you know, I got I got one of your posts from, uh, from Facebook the other day and from Johnny, and uh, and then I called him and I said, hey, you want to be on the radio show? And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, how do I know you? I said, we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody's friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about what you guys do, Johnny. I know that you, um, <coughs> you have a couple different bands that you guys... Uh, that you promote. Right, yeah. Okay, so tell me about that. Lo locally, we're a couple bands here in town. One of them is Three Blind Mice. It's a, it's a classic rock cover band. We play everything from Van Halen to Johnny Cash to Led Zeppelin, everything in that band. A lot of great cover hit songs. Uh, the other band is a newly formed band called The Elders. That's a gem. That's a uh, three-piece power trio kiss tribute act with no makeup, no costumes. Just in your face, loud kiss music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed some of, the, cool. some of the photos that you have on your Reverb Nation. Um, actually, on your Reverb Nation, I don't think you have any of the photos in, in makeup or anything. Uh, yeah, no, nothing those, like it's just. Are. Well, yeah, the Reverb Nation's page is just me. Just you. <laughs> just and, me, and but on, there will but be on, other stuff up on there. And on Facebook, you've got you know you've got in makeup. You're in. You're that's you in makeup. Well, right? that that or was that, a, somebody else? that profile picture of me on Facebook is when I was in a band called Creature back in the day. Creature. Okay, right. I saw that. I saw the. Profile <laughs> On that, on, right. on your site. Um, so, how long have you been in the business? Uh, boy, <laughs> been playing drums professionally for like 41 years. What? Primarily rock. But uh, well, actually, when I first started out, I was a big band swing drummer. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah, I was really into uh, <laughs> Benny Goodman and Buddy Rich and oh my gosh. all that. It was just uh, like my dad. Seriously, it yeah. was it was a it was a big love affair when I was a little kid, and then. Yeah. Uh, I was at my Nana's house one Christmas, and my cousin Marty, I'll never forget it, got Kiss Alive one, and that screwed everything. Up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, how did you, how did you and Jeff hook up? Oh, Jeff, I'll, I'll let you take that one. Uh, well, gosh, I know Johnny. I probably met what 1984, probably yeah. somewhere around there. Uh, Hollywood, just hanging out in the rock scene back in back in Hollywood. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the 80s Sunset Strip days, uh -huh. which were pretty crazy times. I was out there then. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. we met back then. You know, we were in different bands, but uh, you know, we were always, you know, we'd hang out. I was, you know, got along great, you know, some pretty crazy times. And uh hadn't talked to him in a long time, and uh, I decided to relocate. I just got here from, uh, I moved here in December from L.A. Mm -hmm. Um, and Johnny was one of the guys I called and said, hey, what's going on out there? <laughs> now, I noticed both of you guys live out in Henderson. Right. Right, and so why did you move into Henderson instead of Las Vegas? 
or Clark County? What, what was the uh, the drawing point for you? The, what drew you to this well, area? Well, uh, my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good reason. Was my she wife. Lived, she was living there? Yeah, she moved here. Well, she's been here for a while, and then I moved in. Uh, 2005, uh -huh. and she was already here. So. Oh, she was already living there. Right, okay, exactly. So Henderson. Well, I mean, obviously, Henderson is connected. We're all right. connected. You know, Clark County, Las Vegas, Henderson, Green Valley, it's all kind of connected. Right. Here. But I didn't know if there was a reason, because then I know you moved out there, too. That's just kind of, just kind of where I there. ended up. You know, I, I could have I could have landed anywhere out right, there. Right, right. Um, but, you know, the uh, chain of events that occurred to me relocating out here, that's just where, you know, I was like, Henderson, fine, whatever. So what's your next show? Uh, actually, tonight, we uh, every Wednesday night, actually right around the corner from here, from the studio, on uh, Charleston at Jones, there's a bar grill called the Time Out Bar. Uh -huh. It used to be the old King Tut's, but it's called the Time Out Sports Bar, and every Wednesday we host a Three Blind Mice open jam night. And we've supplied the full back line, and it's invited for all musicians to come in, bring their instrument, or their singing self. And they play with us. They do their own thing. If they have a band, they can bring their full band in and wow. play a few songs. It's really a cool nice. thing to network, get musicians throwing down everything, all kinds of style of music. It doesn't matter. It's a lot of fun. Really? It's okay. really cool. Okay, and so I can come and see Fever? You can do Fever. <laughs> <laughs> you can do My man. <laughs> you can get some guys some Fever. But absolutely, you can show That'll up. That'll bring you back. some Devil and Orange Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can learn it. <laughs> And, uh, and another beauty thing, uh, beautiful thing too, is uh, we just landed uh, with the Kiss Band, the Elders, uh -huh. every Monday here in Vegas at the uh, Kiss by Monster Mini Golf across mm -hmm. from the Hard Rock. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yep, it's an in indoor miniature uh, Kiss themed uh, miniature golf course. It's amazing. But every Monday, our band, the Elders, will be there hosting Kissioki. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, oh, which is, song, which is right? a live band Kiss Open Jam. Oh my so God. for three hours every Monday you can play with Jeff and I and Scott Woodward, uh, and we just only do Kiss songs. And what time is that? That's from 8 to 11 every Monday. To 11. And tonight it's 9 to midnight at, to midnight. at the timeout. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, so yeah, we might pop in tonight, you okay. know, yeah, after... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, what are we doing? There's, uh, I don't know if there's anything going on tonight. Uh, you know, but we'll definitely pop in. I'd like to check that out. Um, so, Kevin, tell us a little bit about where you're performing. And I know you had a you had a flyer that you sent me about. Something. Yeah, well, I'll be playing with my band Moonshine on St. Patty's Day <coughs> from uh -huh. seven to eight thirty at Sun City McDonald Ranch. It's 2020 Horizon Ridge okay. Parkway over in Henderson. Yeah. And and tickets are like fifteen dollars for non-residents and twelve dollars for residents. Now, is is that a performance that you're doing with your band? Yes, and okay. it, it'll be actually start out as a Charlie Daniels tribute band, and then uh -huh. maybe halfway through the show, because I've been told his face is too cute to hide behind all that hair. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll lose the hat and the beard somewhere in between, and it'll just be me. Oh, oh, I see. So you're wearing the hat and yes, the beard for the yeah, Charlie Yeah, started out and That's then right. just. Well, I know I met you first over at the Tap House on Monday nights, mm -hmm. and I remember you had the beard and the hat on and everything, and then you came out like you. Yes. 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 Like better said, being yeah. me. With your hair in a ponytail. <laughs> like this, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's all good. It's all good. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. I know, I know um, Kevin and Jeff are going to play a little, I mean, Johnny, sorry, Johnny, <laughs> Kevin, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny and Jeff are going to play a little something on the after the next break. And then uh, Jeannie, did you bring some music, uh, any tracks uh, for them to play of your music? No, no, no. Okay. Um, so did you want to talk a little bit more about uh, what you're doing? Sure. Yeah. <coughs> Come on over. All right. Come on, Come on over. over. All right. We'll put you on the hot spot over here. So so Jeannie is a WEMA member. And as a WEMA member, uh, gosh, you've been a mem member for what, over, over a year? year. Yeah. And um, some of the things that we do with WEMA is we do some showcasing and we do some different events. We have, we've had a songwriter showcase, we did a big band date, a Broadway show, um, and then we also do art events and we're going to be doing a poetry uh, writing workshop coming up soon. Awesome. And we've got a couple things in, in plan and store for this year, including a few musicals that are original plays that we're working on, uh, finding a location for right now. Oh, very awesome. So, so Jeannie, tell me, I know you have, um, you're doing kind of a vaudevillian kind of performance. On show. Saturday? It's, um, it's a cabaret. This is cabaret. Yeah. Okay. It's an afternoon cabaret show, so there's no dining, no dancing, anything like that. And cabaret is different than playing for diners and dancers. Right. You know, because, well, first, you add the verse. Uh 
yeah. which is unusual in Vegas. They're not used to it. But what's wonderful is the Smith Center has opened up this cabaret room. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so people are beginning to be understand yeah. like yeah. a New York cabaret scene right. yeah. involves verses, involves songs that they may not know every word to, which is really lovely because they'll sit there enraptured and hear you. Well, explain to so. uh, explain about it first to, to our listening audience who might not know and might right. not have been to the Smith Center yet. You right. Know, so tell them what it is. Well, say for instance you heard a song like... Um, like Mr. Einstein's theory, right? And, and it's oh, that's a part of your song. Well, yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Well, when, the other day. Well, when you actually hear the, <laughs> when you hear the chorus, and it goes, "A kiss is but a kiss," you know. I mean, yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's as time goes by. Right. But you don't know that for like the mm -hmm. first sixteen, you know, eight, eight because you're listening bars. to that because you're listening to the verse that the composer wrote that didn't get the the airplay. So it's kind yeah. of my understanding that the verse in, in that style of writing is kind of like the little story mm -hmm. that leads into, that leads into what story. they called the chorus. Exactly. But now we call a chorus something different today. You know, well, so yeah, because the composers <laughs> in the '30s and, and '20s were very trained and, and were you know classically they, they had a whole style and a right. whole form. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like a song will be A A B A and B will be the bridge. Right. And people don't write like that anymore. As a matter of fact, when I wrote my first song, I was in high school. And here I'd been singing 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s all that time. My first song that came out was like a carpenter 70s tune, and there was no bridge. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm writing freeform like everybody at that time did, yeah, you know. Right. And I was like, I want to write in, you know, because what I started doing then was taking my poetry and putting it to music. So okay. then it had a bridge. Yay. So, so this leads us into one of the things that WEMA does, and, and we're doing workshops. And uh, this would be a perfect opportunity for Jeannie to come in and do something about, you well, you know, know, I actually did used to teach how to write cabaret right. cabaret, cabaret shows because I had gone to the Eugene O'Neill Cabaret right. Symposium, yeah. I'd gone to Yale's Cabaret right. Camp, and I've studied with some of the best. Right. And it really does have a form. It's like right. 12 songs, third one is the right. sit-down ballad, 11 o'clock ballad. There's like a, a form to a cabaret show. And it's, I want that list. Okay, I can, I can <laughs> well, do that. I mean, I can that. You know, that's about, to me, a large part of what WEMA is about is that mentoring. Yes, well, right. You know, you showing different kinds of ways of doing music and venues. And, I mean, what a gift, you know, for, for all of us, really, yeah. to understand different you know, parts of what art is and music is. Yeah, because you're an experienced performer. You know, I've been around, I've been doing this for a long time. A lot, everybody in this room has been performing for, for been a long time. Been around a long time. Been around a long time. In a good way. In a good way. And, and, and the thing of it is, is mm -hmm. some of it some of it we learned in class in school some yeah. of it we learned by actually being out on the road performing Gary mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. up here um, you know I know Gary's been singing uh, he and I met a long time ago we met when we were like when I was only like 14 years old and he was 16 <laughs> he's a lot older than I am uh, <laughs> and, uh, right. but we met in a show called Vegas Beat 68 which was put on by Joe Behar and uh, <laughs> And it was called um, Vegas Beat 68, and, and you were doing uh, you were doing Sinatra back then. That was the first time I ever did him uh, professionally on yeah. the stage. Mm -hmm. and, and right away, out of, out of the box, you know, he was just a natural at it, you know. So um, I was singing Frankie and Johnny, right? Frankie and Johnny were lovers. I remember that. That was the first time I sang that song. I didn't even know that song. I learned it mm -hmm. for the show. But what we learned traveling on the road or being in shows is a lot different than what you learn sometimes in a class environment. Oh, yeah. Uh, on, on the road experience is, the, is where it's happening. The audience <laughs> is the best teacher. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, it all sounds good in theory, right? So you get out there and oh, things start going awry. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, we're going to be right back. But uh, right now, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Lunch with Sandy. And we're talking a little bit about uh, the, the business of being an artist. And, and we're going to be talking about the experience, you know, how experience really can, and can help an artist to, uh, to grow as an artist. And we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Everybody wave. You again is your host, <laughs> Sandy Castell. Hi, and welcome back to WEMA, Women in Music and Arts, Lunch with Sandy. I'm here today with Amy Frost, my Delivering Happiness messenger, messenger, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. and then also Gary Anthony, who's been, been on the show with us for the past few weeks, and he's uh, been singing some songs for us. Oh, I've got Janice Wilson calling in. I want to tell her to call us on the on this radio station. Hold on a second. Let, tell her to call. Um, and then we've got Jeannie Bry, and we've got uh, Johnny Lust, and Jeff Duncan. So, uh, welcome back to Lunch with Sandy and Gary Anthony. Did I say Gary? Yes, I did. So, uh, Gary, we were, come on over here. We were talking a little bit about uh, 
how, how it really helps, you know, even if you have an education in, in performing okay, that you get in school, it's still good, you know, to uh, get experience being in live performances and, and when you're traveling on the road and doing shows. Well, that's where you're going to really know whether it works or not, uh, being on stage live um, and work with the audience. Uh, the, uh, but, uh, you know, the ongoing, I mean, being on a stage is where it's going to be. It'll help you decide whether it's going to work or not. Well, yeah, I, I think, you know, you have to try out the material. It's just very like, well. you know, you Steve Rossi, well. you know, Steve Rossi is a comedian. And, you know, a lot of the material, like when he goes and sits in over uh, Thursday night at, uh, with uh, Kent Foote, mm -hmm. you know, he'll try out material there. He says, if I can do it there, I know it'll work, you know, in a lot of situations. Well, I, uh, there are times when uh, I used to live in Manhattan Beach, I remember. Um, uh, the comedians used to come in and uh, there was a club down there. Comedy uh, Magic Club. Yeah, the, right. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> they used to go down there just to rehearse their their material, and and if it worked, they use it. If it didn't, they don't. Right. right. Yeah. So so really, if you're if you're a young performer and you're just starting out, what what advice would you give them? Oh Gary? my gosh. I'm gonna get it from everybody. Oh my yeah. gosh. What kind of, what kind of advice can you give a, a young per person in show business? Decide to get out. <laughs> Stop. The other Stop. Stop. Run. Stop. Run. <laughs> It, it all depends on their passion. Yes. And that's the key word. That's the key of everything. Um, I started off, my dad was a big band leader, the same as yours, and it just began with a passion, and you just it just stuck, it sticks with you all your life, and uh, you just go for it. it. It's a passion that you can't uh, get rid of. Yeah, I, I think um, um, I was at a, um, a big conference in 2000 and, uh, 2001, and... Uh, was it Fleetwood Mac or Fleetwood? I get confused. Whatever the guy is, the, the guy's drummer, name, the guy's name, the, the it's tall one, Mick that, Fleetwood. Mick Fleetwood. Thank you. Mick Fleetwood stood up there and he said, "Look at us. We're 50 years old." He goes, "Keep it in your life, one way or the other." He said, "Even if you have a family to raise and you have to have your daytime job, do it either in community, you do it at the church, you do it at, for friends at parties, whatever. Keep it in your life. If you know, if you're passionate about it, because that's there's a part of us that always is with us as performers, and and it's." Not easy for some other people to understand that. We're not normal people. <laughs> That's what you're no, we're, we're not like I'm some serious. regular. <laughs> My dad always used to say, "If you love what you're doing, you never work a day in your life." That's right. That's, That's right. right. Well, I'm talk about it's it's got to be a burning desire. Yes. You know, whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is you're you passionate. Because yes. if you have a burning desire. Nothing will stop you. That's right. And if you don't, everything will stop you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Or, and and yeah. even if you have a burning desire, a lot of things will try to stop you. Yeah, they can try. And they can try. They can try, but it's still, it's, it's, it, like I can go away for a little bit, but then I have to come back yeah. to it. You know, even yeah. though it seems like I'm away from it, it's still inside of me. Like I might sit down at the piano and, and play a little bit mm -hmm. on a song that I'm working on, and maybe maybe I go away and I do some other stuff that's all you know, family stuff, and you know. I, I think an important aspect for young musicians and artists that are uh, truly growing is it, very important. You have to be honest with yourself, and you have yes. to know your limits. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty much a key right there as far as, you know, trying to grow in limits? your, in your craft. Knowing your limits. Limits? Are there limits? <laughs> well, well. No, I well, you know, like, Okay, I'm five foot. I'm not going to be a, a professional <laughs> basketball player. No matter how much I want. Model, and you're not going to be on the modeling <laughs> show. <laughs> you know, there's been all kinds of aspects. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, when, you, when you say show business, uh, it is a business. That's what it is. You got to yeah. treat it as a business, and, right. and um, <laughs> there's very aspects of uh, show business. I mean, uh, when I first started out, it was of course singing, and then I went behind the scenes. Uh, I, I went into studio productions. I went to recording engineer, and I was a sound man. We're talking about the '80s back then. I was a sound man for Oingo Boingo and oh, Police. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, but that was a different aspect of business. Yeah, I had to find the niche. Mm -hmm. You got to find the niche that where your talent lies. And um, in, in mine, it was Sinatra, obviously. Yeah. You uh, came back to it, yeah. Yeah, yes. I came back yeah. to right. it. Yes, right. yes. Because you knew that that was what you wanted. That was to the do. passion. Right. Right. That was the passion. Yeah. So uh, I came to Vegas, and I said, you know, I didn't know anybody, and I said, well, uh, I can do it. I was <coughs> producing and directing television in Hollywood, yeah. and I said I gave it all up. I had to come to Vegas to fulfill the dream. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jeannie, I'm sure it's the same for you. You know. Yeah. You I, always kind of stayed. <coughs> in it, I pretty much always stayed in it. Um, I've evolved because, like, I've, I started out as a tap dancer, so I was in a dance company in New York, 
and so it was a tap dancing company. Yeah. A client, a and then, but I love doing like uh, like Broadway shows. Right. right. I was off Broadway. Did that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. And again, it's a very different talent. Like when I was doing television, you don't you you go for the silent. Like you're still on the inside, and then it shows. Yeah, yes. the subtlety comes in. And then when you're on stage, you you, you still have a stillness, but you you allow the, the broadness to come out. You know, and mm -hmm. same Especially thing with music. Right. Yeah, I mean it, it. And and the thing is, is like I was telling you earlier when I first came here they said I moved to Vegas in 95 from New York City and they said we want a New York cabaret show at Debbie Reynolds and I and I did it I wrote a New York cabaret show well in New York it's 12 songs 10 of which no one has ever heard of <laughs> and, and that doesn't work in Vegas. Right. I mean, right. they, should, they just really even, don't understand that. Even at the Smith Center, I mean, mm -hmm. and you still have to do songs they know in right. Vegas. It's a, because in New York, they're listening with their head, and they are the most literate audience you've ever seen. Yes, yes. They know. They not only know the composer, they live next door to his daughter. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> Whereas in Vegas, they listen more with their heart and their gut, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's 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 a whole different place that you're you're actually reaching to. When I tell people. If they're just starting out, go see what you like. If you're a Frank Sinatra guy, go see Frank Sinatra shows. Right. Go see as many as you can, and then say, okay, what do I bring to this that's, that no one else does? Right. Yeah. You know, because but you want to see them because when no matter what, like I said, twelve songs. The third one is always the ballad. You could go see almost anyone. It could be Shania Twain. I'm almost willing to bet. Th that's right. The third song, she'll sit down on a two up songs. And it'll be ballad. it'll be the opener, and then there'll be another one, and then a third song. They sit down, they pull you in. That's my all problem. I always want to do all the ballads, you know, from the beginning to the no, no. <laughs> no I got to have the opener really. and everybody's sitting down. I do love, I do love that. Now, you know, and I don't think so much about the cabaret show, but when I'm putting a show together, but I do think about, okay, I've got to come in, you know, with a big opening number, and I got to close with a big opening number, and then in between, you know, but you have to have a lot of more, a lot more up numbers than ballads, and. Uh, I have a tendency to like those ballads, but that is, is and that's similar so true. to a cabaret thing. When too, you're in New York, because you know, the, that's the a early cabaret people, the, the ones that are just starting, will have eight ballads. That's right. And, and the reviewer <laughs> will almost always say, I'm not going until she gets it done. That's four right. ballads done. <laughs> so listen, we've got, we've got um, Jeff, you're sitting <coughs> there with a guitar, and you guys are going to do a song. Are you, are you going to sing? Well, I guess we're going to do a kiss song for you guys. Just oh, okay. kind of what we do in the Elders. Okay. It's one of their big hits here. Yeah, okay. You want to get you some extra mics do like here, this, so. like that? Yeah. And then now, are you playing to tracks? No. This, you, is, this is, is all just live. Oh, this stuff here. This is unplugged. Unplugged. Oh, cool. <laughs> so unplugged. I'm watching Sandy. <laughs> so, so you guys can sing along if you want. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You know the words okay. to this. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. And 
party every day. I wanna rock and roll all night and party every day. Get it, Jeff? How would Sinatra sing it? Oh, uh, let's hear it. I want to rock and roll all night. And, <laughs> and party all night. Hey, all hey I party, <laughs> forget about it. I party all night. <laughs> 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 and, and, and Rodney Dangerfield, how will he do it? Oh, let me tell you, I'll party all night. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> mentioning while we were on our break, she said what we're doing as WEMA is actually, you know, we're interviewing, we're bringing together all these performers from a lot of different genres, and, and as we can tell, we all learn uh, our, the basics from either big band or rock, you know, you might learn it in a different genre, but then you find your your place, you know, where your heart really rests, and that's what you go after, that's what you're passionate Absolutely. about, and that's what you follow through with. So, she says, we are mentortainment. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Mentoring artists of all ages through education, mentorship, and scholarships. And it's so good to have everybody here today. So, tell us a little bit more about where we can find out about your shows that you're doing. Um, well, uh, you're, uh, you www.facebook.com slash Johnny Lust and then the number one. All my shows are always posted there, all okay, the time. Yeah. All right, and Jeff? Uh, I want, well, anybody who wants to talk to me, uh, same thing, Facebook slash Jeff Duncan. I'm not hard to find. There's a lot of, go on YouTube and find me too. I'm not hard to find on the internet at all. Um, Actually, when I went to Facebook, there were a few Jeff Duncans, and some of them were not your face. <laughs> there were other faces out there. So there's some, you know, other people there that have that if you put, if, you put, if you put guitar after it. But guitar, uh, you know, yeah. That's what I do. I always put, you know, music or guitar or, you know, drummer or something like that. With the yeah. I'd like to that interject too to your WEMA uh, listeners and members that the Jam Nights are open to, obviously, to women musicians as well. Yeah. Not just men, you know. Yeah. So come on down and throw down great. with us. Okay, great. Tonight, Time Out Bar. Tonight, Time Out Bar and Monday night. Charleston at Jones, 9 to 12, and then every Monday starting March 18th at the Kiss for Mini Golf. Right. And Amy, oh, let, where can we find out more about what you're doing? Because I know you're doing a lot with the uh, the blog that you're doing for the Delivering well, Happiness. Well, uh, the, the DeliveringHappiness.com. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, the Zappos. It's a sister yeah. company to Zappos and the Nonprofit Sector Foundation.org. And yeah. we're doing a, a, a program I'm very excited about, A Million Jobs. And we want to get um, a, a million jobs for nonprofits nationally. Oh, that's great. We want every nonprofit to be able to have the funds to have, you know, bring in somebody so somebody gets employed and gets, you know, to, to help. 
do causes that they care about. And also, you found a hundred women with causes yes, and for stepping up for them yes. with their purpose with the Oprah Oprah and Magazine Crocs Cares. and Crocs Cares and the right. nonprofit foundation. And we're That's we're right. giving those. We're in March 16th in Moreno Valley. We have our next awards there. Okay. And and you know, I'd really like to see us all get together. You know, and and find other things to do together yeah. with, through the uh, through the Oprah Cares and, and oh yeah, we're magazine. definitely going to leverage the, the crap Oprah out of that baby. We did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and Jeannie, we can find you tomorrow mm -hmm. night That's at true. the Italian American Club, and we can also find you Saturday at the Winchester. Right, and if you actually get your tickets in advance, it's only ten dollars for Winchester. If okay. at the door, it'll be twelve dollars, okay. and that's on well, just north of Desert Inn, uh, McLeod Pecos is right. on McLeod, right. and the uh, Italian American Club is on Sahara, just like the northeast corner next to Sonic at the Eastern. That's so. right. And it's been around for a long time, but they've totally remodeled it. Oh, it's it, and renovated. It looks fabulous. It, I know. They, they've always you been touched now. They're swanky. Oh, it's um, very new swanky. everything. Yeah, it's And Gary, how can we find out about you and your music and your booking? Well, I'll, I'll make it really easy. Just Google Gary Anthony. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find me. But you're, what is it, Major Entertainment? Yeah, um, it's uh, majorep.com. Uh, that's the agency. I, I book conventions, private parties, and all that. If you want to see me perform, book me. <laughs> it's that easy, friend. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and we, we'd, like to thank, we'd like to thank you, Sandy, for having us on the show. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Sandy. Thank and so Wema, well, it, it's so good to have everybody here and uh, to support Wema and everything that we're doing. And if you want to find out more about Wema, you go, can go to the Wema Foundation. It's www.wemafoundation.org, and you can find out, you can become a member, you can donate, you can become a sponsor, and we have the events throughout the year. And also, if you want to find out about my music, you can go to sandycastell.com, that's S-A-N-D-Y-K-A-S-T-E-L.com, and you can find my, uh, my albums uh, this time around, only in Las Vegas, and the new album that I'm going to be releasing soon, Indiana Rain. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. so thank you so much for joining us here on Lunch with Sandy, and we're going to end with uh, one of my songs. So what are we ending with? What are we going to play today? Vegas. Viva yeah, Las Vegas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sing along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll see you next Wednesday here on KLAB 1230 AM for Lunch with Sandy. And Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. All right. Gonna set my soul on fire. <laughs> Got a whole lot of money that's ready to burn. So get those days up higher. <laughs> You need to do the lip. <laughs> and the lip in the hip. <laughs> 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 That's a good name for an album. <laughs> the lip in the hip. I'm going to combine the name. I'm going to check it. I'm not going to.